Hi, everybody. I'm Diane Brady. I am here with the Secretary of Transportation, Pete Buttigieg. Secretary Buttigieg, good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. So let's talk, start with this proposed rule um, that requires airlines to compensate passengers. Let me ask, why now? Why is this the right time to introduce it? Well, I think interest in this has been building up for a long time, and this builds on a lot of the work that we have been doing from day one in this administration. Uh, you know, uh, as we see more and more demand passengers returning to the skies, on one hand, we see a great thing, which is an airline sector that has rebounded beyond our, our greatest hopes just two years after a phase where it was taking a lot of work just to keep the airline sector in business. That's all good. Yeah. The other side of it is that there's been a ton of frustration uh, among passengers about the way airlines have treated them uh, and about performance. Now, so far this year, we've seen improvement. As a matter of fact, cancellation rates, uh, rates have been below 2% every month this year, which is uh, something that hasn't happened in a while. But we know that there have been so many frustrations that we have to keep the pressure up. Our goal is that by the end of this term, we'll be able to look back and say that this administration brought in the biggest expansion of passenger rights and enforcement of passenger rights since deregulation decades ago. I think we're on track to do that. And this is a big part of that, making sure that passengers are not only refunded when your flight gets canceled, something we've been pushing for a long time, but compensated when you have a delay or a cancellation that the airline could have prevented. Well, and, and Canada and Europe already has similar rules. Did you look to them for guidance in terms of what really we should be doing here in the U.S.? Yeah, the, the Canadian and the European frameworks have demonstrated that you can uh, have a, a, a requirement for compensation for passengers, that that's consistent with uh, competitively priced airfares. It kind of shoots down the argument that uh, uh, this would, would lead to, to out of control airfare increases. And it's, it's pointed to some of the benefits and some of the challenges in enforcing it. So we're certainly going to learn from the experience in Canada and in Europe. I, I imagine what we come up with will be a distinctly American approach that, that might be uh, different in its details here in the U.S., but uh, certainly benefiting from the experiences that other passengers in other countries have had, and frankly, the support that they've had that we think U.S. passengers ought to have, too. Just give us a sense of, of do you feel like we fully played out now the impact of the pandemic, and now everybody should just be acting like this is the, the new baseline? Well, look, the reality is that the shockwaves from the pandemic are going to keep coming for years, even if we've said goodbye to the periods where uh, everybody's uh, under mask mandates and, and uh, travel was, uh, was depressed. That's obviously behind us. But, you know, whether we're talking about uh, how office work is structured or commuting patterns uh, or what it's like in, in the skies, you know, it's clear that, that there's still a, a lot going on that's a, a adapting to that and adjusting to that. Uh, even us as a department, the FAA, it's uh, still adjusting for the effect that the pandemic had on our training pipelines because it could take a long time to get somebody through training that has to be in person to be qualified as an air traffic controller. So we, we recognize all of that. But something else has happened, which is you got an airline sector that's uh, recovered in terms of demand. And by the way, recovered with a lot of taxpayer help, about $50 yep. billion dollars to make sure they didn't go out of business a couple years ago. Uh, the American taxpayer gave the airlines that leg up to stay in business. Now, uh, as they uh, move forward and, and uh, earn profits through, uh, uh, through service, that service needs to live up to the billing of the tickets that they sell. And that means everything from adequate customer service when there's a problem to adequate work to prevent those problems from coming up in the first place. We get that there will always be a non-zero level of cancellations and delays, largely because of the weather. Um, but we also see that there are lots of factors that the airlines could control and do control that they still need to step up on. Uh, we press them, especially after about a year ago, early summer, we saw terrible cancellations, even on blue sky weather days where weather wasn't uh, explaining what happened. We saw an even worse situation uh, last December when uh, historic weather conditions coincided with an unprepared airline and so many Southwest passengers, about yeah. 2 million, uh, got stranded or stuck. Uh, we're now entering a stage where the airlines, I believe, have the tools to provide truly first-rate customer service and on-time performance, and we're going to use our tools to hold them accountable to it. 